Hello, I'm Dr. Roberta Dwyer. I'm a veterinarian at the Gluck Equine Research Center at the University of Kentucky. In this segment, we're going to talk specifically about the skull and some of its general anatomy and points of interest. So, on the skull, there's a, the broad, flat plane of the horse's forehead, and you can see here where the bony protection for the eye is, is pretty significant. The horse's eye is on the lateral side of the head, on the right and the left side. They are a prey animal. They have to worry about lions and tigers and cougars and panthers getting them when they're out in the wild. And so they have to be able to see almost 360 degrees around them. That's why these eyes are located on the lateral sides of their head. They do not see things that are directly under their, their lips and their teeth. They don't see humans that are standing right in front of them. That's why that's a dangerous place to stand. Uh, nor do they see directly behind their hind ends or their tail. But when they're down grazing, the way that their eyes are made can let them see quite a bit all the way around their body, especially if they're moving their head side to side. So there's quite a bit of protection here for the eye. Any eye injury in my book is an emergency. So if your horse is squinting, doing a lot of tearing, or there's pus coming out of the eye, they've got their heads in the back of the stall where it's dark, because they don't want to be exposed to light, you need to call your veterinarian and get them to look at that eye. So moving down, we have the maxilla, which is the upper jawbone, and we have the mandible, which is the lower jawbone, just like on people. Dentistry is a big part of veterinary medicine, and it's important to understand the anatomy of teeth. Horses have the same types of teeth that people have. They have incisors, which are used for grasping hay and forage. Then we have this uh, gap where there are no teeth. Many horses will have one canine tooth on the upper and the lower arcade. This particular skeleton does not have canine teeth. Then there's one, two, three premolars. And then moving up, there's one, two, three molars on the maxillary side and on the mandibular side. There is a unique feature to the teeth of horses. This is a broken off uh, cheek tooth of a horse. And when they're born, these teeth have a set length. And as the horse wears these teeth down or wears this surface down, they will continually erupt from the, the base of the tooth out so that there's always going to be a chewing surface until the horse gets up into his 20s where they're just gonna run out of tooth, there's nothing more to erupt, and the horse loses that last piece of the premolar or molar. So that's a very unique feature to the horse, which is uh, interesting and scary at the same time because if you ever have to remove one of these teeth, you can see how deep into the, the bony structure that that root is. It's not just like taking a human molar or premolar out. There's a, that's an, a pretty extensive piece of surgery. So these teeth are often looked at on the outside because the maxillary teeth, the upper teeth, are wider than the mandible, which is a narrower uh, piece of bone. And just in the daily wear and tear of, of horses chewing, they're going to get sharp points on the outside of the upper arcade of teeth and they're going to potentially get sharp points on the inside of the mandibular teeth. And what a veterinarian will come out and do is take a rasp or an instrument and to shave off those points so they don't injure the tongue or the cheek of the horse because that can interfere with chewing, it can cause some weight loss and other issues with, um, with keeping their weight up because they have to be able to chew. They, uh, a total veterinary examination of the mouth will also be looking at these incisors because there's various different things that can happen with the anatomy of the horse and the way they wear those incisors at the same time. And so there might be some corrective procedures that need to be done there. Another important part of the horse's uh, skull anatomy, this is a piece of this nasal bone. And the thing to remember, even though this is a 26-year-old skeleton, which is very fragile and has a few fractures, the nasal bones of the horse do not go all the way down to its muzzle. 
That's why you never should hit a horse on the front part of its face is because these bones, and this is part of this nasal bone that is broken off, you can see how thin that is and how shelly that bone is. So it's very easy to fracture. Those types of fractures will probably cause quite a bit of bleeding and it's just they can accidentally break these uh, by running into objects but you never want to be hitting a horse on this part of its anatomy because these bones will fracture. So the bones, nasal bones on this horse actually only extend about three inches and they're all this you know very thin plated kind of bone. So that's something that some people don't understand that this is all cartilage and connective tissue down here on the muzzle and there is no bony structure beneath that. On this skeleton you will see a lot of these little holes. These are called foramen. There's lots of them in the skull itself and that's where nerves and blood vessels will come out of the bone to innervate different parts of the face. You'll find these throughout the skeleton of, of any animal's body. And these aren't drill holes, these are just these are natural openings that the body has for different vessels and nerves. So I look forward to joining you for another segment on another part of the anatomy of the horse. For more information, you can go to thehorse.com, internet resources, your veterinarian, and your local public library. Mm -hmm.